It's February 7th. And here's February 7th. The Three Rivers Challenge is still going on through the month of February. Now, we went all the way through January just eating from our pantry and from our refrigerator and from the freezers that we have and from the canned stock, you know, that I have in the big pantry downstairs. So, food that I canned from the little pantry here that had the pasta and rice and such and here under the cabinet, the canned food that I had bought and out of the refrigerator and freezer. So, that's what we ate from the whole month of January. I tried to share recipes with you when we did that. Of course, we eat a lot of leftovers and a lot of the same things. So, I didn't feel good about showing you the same things over and over and over. But we did, for the whole month of January, eat from our pantry. Now, here it is. It's February 7th. Now, we have been eating from our pantry and our refrigerators and freezers also. But I did have to run to Sam's. I ran to Sam's to get a few things for the kids. You know, we have a uh, granddaughter that's handicapped, and she likes certain things. And so we did have to run to Sam's to get some of those things. Thank you. Madeline was wanting milk, so she came in here to let me know that she needs milk. But I wanted to share some of the things that we picked up. We like this American pasteurized cheese. I got eggs because my hens are not laying enough eggs for us. I did get these drinks. And I got butter. And then we got two gallons of milk. So that's what I went to Sam's for. I went to Sam's to just pick up some of these things that, I, you know, were kind of perishable and that I didn't have enough to last through the month of February. Now, normally during a pantry challenge, I don't do any shopping through it. Now, I don't do any shopping um, to prepare for it because it defeats the whole purpose of eating out of your pantry and trying to save that money for the month of January and February. Well, I didn't have enough of the certain things that, you know, my family likes to eat a lot of being the butter, which goes in so many things, the eggs, and the cheese, which goes in so many things, plus the milk. So I ran out of those things, and having having a granddaughter with disabilities, and one of them being autism, she likes to eat the same things over and over. Which brings me to the Chobani yo yogurt. The Chobani yogurt, since I bought it the last time at Sam's, there was an increase from uh, December. I didn't shop in January. And then today, February the 7th, was when we went shopping. That yogurt had increased $4 per package. So we decided not to get that yogurt, and we're going to just eat some peaches and things that I have on hand that she likes. And so when she asks for yogurt, I'm just going to give her peaches. I'm going to ask her if she wants peaches because, you know, I've, I've shared with you before, if there's an, an exorbitant price increase... I won't buy it. Four dollars in a month, that's incredibly too much, too much of a price hike. They can just keep that yogurt. I do know how to make my own yogurt, and that's perfectly good for me and Donald. But Madeline, she has, um, with her autism, she has certain tastes, and she can taste any differences in anything, and then she may not eat the homemade yogurt. She sometimes will eat other brands. So I may get a, a less expensive brand and let her try it and see if that's what she wants. But she does not eat um, the homemade yogurt that I make because, you know, it's, it doesn't have sweeteners or anything in it. It's just plain yogurt. And I may, I may add like a teaspoon of jam to it to give it some flavor and a little bit of sweetness. But um, So I left that Chobana yogurt there. I'm going to include in here... Uh, something happened to us and I thought well I'm not going to share that with you because it's kind of negative and I like to keep this channel positive but I have a handicapped grandchild and then I had two other of my grandchildren with me and we were running out to the store to get these few things today and to eat pizza there we like to eat their pizzas and hot dogs and they like to get an ice cream so it's like an outing for us we were in line I had Madeline in the cart and the two beside of me, and these two people out of the blue, this man and this woman, just so rudely just walks up and gets right in front of us and turned their backs to me. They didn't acknowledge that we were there. They just thought that it was okay that they just got 
plowed right in front of us. And so they got in front of us. And I thought to myself, that is so rude. I, I cannot believe that they didn't just respect somebody else in line, but especially to see a grandmother with a, a handicapped child and two other kids to take care of, the total disrespect for another human being who was already under hardship, that they would make it harder on somebody just to get in line and get their food before, before us. I was just taken aback by the rudeness. I really was. I was, um, I was shocked. So I have the backs of those two people, and I, I'm going to include that because, um, you know, it just shows the uh, what you have when you go out into a world that is consumed with itself and doesn't care about other people. Now, the little guy that works at Sam's came up to me and said, do you have this app? Didn't You won't have to stand in line if you've got this app. And he wanted to let me know about this app. And I said, you know what really bothers me? I said, these two people that rudely broke in line in front of us and didn't have any respect for another person. And he said, I'm really sorry about that. Do you want me to go up and handle it? Would you like me to ask them uh, to step back? And I said, no. I said, I don't really want you to do that. I said, I just kind of wanted to blow off a little bit of steam because, um, you know, I was still kind of taken aback by it. And I said, I just, I said, I just don't know what was wrong with people. He said, you see it every day. He said, there's just no respect. He said, it's just part of coming out into the public and the way people have gotten. He said, it's just it's like that every day. But I did, um, did let him know and blow off a little bit of steam and I felt a little bit better. But I was totally shocked by that. I really was. Um, you know, it was just, uh, it's just mind boggling about how rude people can be, especially to people that seem weaker out in public than than they were, right? You know, I, I don't get in front of anybody in line anyway. And if I needed to get in line, if I was in such a hurry I couldn't wait, I would ask them if it was okay. But to just barrel in between up there like a, you were better and deserved to be ahead of somebody it was incredibly rude. And my little grandchildren got to witness that. They got to see that. But I'm going to include the backs of these people. I don't think you can see the woman as much as you can see the man. And uh, just let you see the rudeness. I know they'll never see this video, but, you know. I remember hearing a story about a woman who had a handicapped child in a wheelchair. And she goes in the bathroom and she's waiting in line. Well, the handicapped stall comes up, and these people just keep running to this handicapped stall, stall. This stall is set aside for a handicapped person, and here she is. But for some reason, they don't feel like when it comes open that it's for this handicapped person. You know, we can make all kinds of rules, all the kind, all kinds of rules, uh, but that don't mean people are going to follow them, does it? In cases like that, I mean, what would you do? I have a handicapped grandchild. You know, we've dealt with it for 12 years. So if that handicapped stall come open and there was a person behind us that was more handicapped, you know, that needed that handicapped stall, uh, stall, I would hope that I would say, go ahead, you go ahead and go before me, right? But you know, you're not guaranteed that that's gonna happen. You're not guaranteed that when you go out that already you have the hardship of someone being handicapped the extra time, energy, and attention it takes to care for somebody like that in public, you already have that on you. You know that when you go out. But the just the the disrespect and the the selfishness and rudeness of other people is is hard to prepare for that. You know, it always surprises me. I don't know why. I've lived long enough to know, but it always surprises me. When I, when I deal with it, it's always, um, but I thought if I share this on my channel, maybe it'll help somebody else that that's happened to, or maybe it'll encourage somebody that's watching this channel to remember to be respectful of handicapped people, be respectful of the caregivers of handicapped people. You know, it's already hard enough to get in the door and to be there and to deal with that handicap uh, while you're doing the normal everything, you know, uh, chores of life. It's to have the rudeness and the disregard and disrespect of somebody that doesn't treat you like a human or doesn't have any respect for you and totally disregards and is rude. It's just, uh, 
is hard to deal with. But I, I'm, I wanted to share that with y'all because it was so annoying to me. It was so upsetting. Uh, I really wanted to say something to those people. I really did. I, I hope that them getting their food ahead of us uh, gained them whatever it is they needed to gain from treating people like that. I really did. I, you know, I don't, I don't want to treat anybody like that. If you're in line, I'm going to respect your place in line, and I'm going to get behind you in my place in line, and I'm not going to take a spot that belongs to somebody else because who do you think you are? What pride, what pride lies in you to think you are better and you should go before anybody else? I don't understand it. So that's what I dealt with today, but we didn't let that get us down. We didn't let that discourage our little, we call it a pizza party. Uh, our grandkids love it. Of course, they were just kids. They were arguing and, <laughs> and just being their self there. But we went out today at Sam's, had a pizza party and ice cream and dealt with the rudeness. And then we went on with our day. We picked up our things. I've got a little haul for you here, which I just showed you, I think, which is the butter, the eggs, the cheese. And then I wanted to try these drinks because I am on a course to find drinks that don't have sugar, don't have, uh, doesn't spike my insulin, le insulin levels. So I thought I would try these. Of course, I did not buy the bottled water because I reuse my cups. I put my water in reusable cups and I don't I try not to ever mess with bottles of water that's just not something that I do on a regular basis but I did pick these up I wanted to try them and see if they were a good alternative and help me with my insulin levels now this cheese I'll divide this block of cheese up and they had this on sale uh, it was like seven dollars and something so it was a good price and I like to get this you know to make the grilled cheese sandwiches with even make macaroni and cheese with. I use this in a lot of different ways. So I'm going to uh, cut, uh, open this pack and just individually put it in smaller baggies so that this will be accessible when we need it. Yeah, we were in line. I have Madeline who, who's handicapped and I have these two with me today. And these people think it's okay just to get in front of you without even, a, without even regarding who you are. And that's what you deal with when you go out into public. Y'all don't run into them. We decided to come to Sam's today to get a few things that was on our grocery list. So we had to stop at the Sam's Cafe and get pizza. And you can see they got their ice creams, their uh, frozen yogurts. They're only a dollar at Sam's Club. <laughs> Maddie had her hot dog. I ate a pizza and I got a diet drink. We are getting some things that we have ran out of, some things, and I'll let David tell you. What are we getting today? Maddie, you can wave. Hi. Hey. Um, I, I remember what we needed. Yeah. Yeah. Milk. Oh, yeah. Yogurt. Drinks and butter. Okay. So that's what we're going to get today. We're going to pick up a few things. I wanted to do the pantry challenge for the month of February also, but we did it through the month of January. These are a few things that we've ran out of. Milk, which Mad this grandchild loves milk. And yogurt. Yogurt. Yeah, eggs. So we've run out of those things for January. Normally I just like to wholly eat out of the pantry the whole months of January and February, but that's not possible right now. Madeline's very particular. This grandchild's very particular about what she eats. And we've gotta have milk and yogurt, but we stopped at the cafe today to have lunch and this is an inexpensive, delicious lunch. I'll just take this big block of cheese here. Let's see how many pounds it is. How many pounds is this? It's a five pound block of cheese. I'll just take this and break it up. So what I do is just take these little stacks of cheese that are here and I just break them like this into however much I think would go good in a uh, individual package how much we would use in an individual package of cheese. And I just stack it up like this 
and get it ready to go in my individual baggies. Now Cheese Life, Cheese has a very, it has a pretty good long shelf life anyway. When I was at home, I, when my grown children, when they were at home, we ate a lot of cheese every month. And I would sometimes freeze it, you know, just wanting to preserve its freshness. But then I started noticing the dates. I'm going to see if I can find one on here. And it's a very uh, thin printed date right here. I don't even know if it shows up on camera. But the, but the date on this is best if used by July 2025. So we'll certainly eat this before that. That's leaving this cheese good for at least a year. And of course, we go through one of these probably every month with the different recipes that we make with this kind of a cheese. So I just go ahead and divide this and then I use it in my recipes. Make grilled cheese sandwiches, different things. I have some bigger packages, some smaller packages here when I bag these up. So I'll have this on hand and it'll do us just fine for our cheese supply for the month. If I run out of this, then I try to go get it. This was on sale. This was only, this was like at $7.68 for this five pounds of American cheese. Sometimes I pay as high as $11 for it, but I don't think I've ever paid more than 11. So that's how much the price fluctuates. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put these individual packets into these bags. Now here I have all these individually packs of cheese that are ready to go and they've got a closable Ziploc um, opening right here so that whenever we do get one of these cheeses out to use it, we can close it back up. You know, in that big block, it didn't have any, kind, any way to reclose it once you opened it. Well, I've got another Ziploc baggie here and I'm gonna double bag these. I'm just gonna stack these in this baggie. Now here it is, here's our pack of cheese, repackages, repackaged in our baggies and ready to use as we need them. I'll go ahead and put this one on the top shelf where the kids can reach it and we can make our sandwiches and things as needed with this. I will be eating dinner alone. We had lunch there at Sam's, but tonight I'll be eating dinner alone so I'll have something really simple. I may just have cheese, olives, pickles, and crackers on a charcuterie board because that's the way I eat when I'm by myself and I'm not having to cook for anybody else. So I'm gonna make it as simple as I can tonight. But if I do different recipes and I do some things, I'll be glad, I'll be sure to share those with you for the February pantry challenge as I eat from our pantry. Cookies down here on the floor trying to get my feet. He wants to play and I have my bare feet. And so he's trying to get them. If you thought that I looked like I was dancing. <laughs> I wasn't dancing. I was just trying to keep cookie off of my feet. Well, that's our little cookie moment for today. I'm going to go ahead and put this cheese and eggs and butter and all this stuff up. I just wanted to uh, share with you what today was like. And I hope that this encourages somebody to be good. If you encounter uh, handicapped people out in public, I mean, be good to everybody anyway. Be good and give everybody the respect of um, being uh, another human being. But if you, especially if you see someone that's handicapped, just give them the grace. Go ahead and you know, don't jump in front of them. Don't run over them just because you can. I guarantee people with disabilities' life is harder than yours. I guarantee that. It's harder to get up and uh, try to do everything, everyday normal things dealing with disabilities. So be as kind and respectful as you can to everybody, but especially people with disabilities. Thank you for joining me today and let me share things with you today. Let me share my little Sam's haul with you and our uh, experience there at Sam's today. I'm always glad that you choose to spend time with me today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for letting me share this with you. If you have any comments, if you have anything to add, or if you have any kind of uh, anything you want to say about this, feel free to use the comments down below. I love to read your comments. I love to get them and to answer them. I hope you have a wonderful day. And like always, until next time.